Interested in doing sports photography? Here are five things I have learned in the past decade out taking photos myself that you won't hear anywhere else. Hey guys, this is Josh, the 980 Know It All, coming to you today to talk a little bit about kind of things I have learned in the past 10 years doing sports photography. Now before we get into that, if you guys could take a minute, go down and click the like button. Uh, it helps out. Leave a comment down below if you guys have any tips yourself if you're a photographer or any questions you'd like me to answer. And guys, as well, if you could subscribe to the channel, you know, once again, it helps me out. It's a lot of fun. You get to share these videos and, you know, interact about baseball. So guys, today I'm doing something a little bit different. This is kind of baseball related because it's kind of what I do with the website, but it also kind of goes in a different direction. And here are five things that I've learned uh, doing sports photography the past decade. Now, the first thing that I learned, and this actually shocked me, is that most teams, now this doesn't count major league teams or even minor league teams, but most teams, college, summer wood bat, especially high school, that type of stuff, have zero coverage. No, they don't get a lot of newspaper coverage. They don't get a lot of uh, photographers going out there and taking time to get action shots. They really have almost no coverage whatsoever. Uh, in this area where I live, Lower Columbia College was the first college that really welcomed me in all the way. Uh, I did photograph Corbin University before that. But that's because I worked there. I, I lived in that area. And so I kind of did that just on the side. But... Lower Columbia was the first team that really brought me in and said, yeah, you can come in and photograph games and interview players and that type of stuff. And one of the things that I learned while doing that is that that team didn't have a lot of coverage. The newspaper would be there from time to time, but they wouldn't be there all the time because there were other sports in the local area. Small town newspaper can't cover every game. Um, but I also learned that, you know, one day when I was talking with the head coach, he said that this was more coverage than he'd seen some Division I schools get. And I was just a, well, still am just a baseball uh, fan site that does photos and interviews and, you know, editorial pieces, just talking about what we love about the game. So it really isn't an official media outlet, although we've grown big enough where uh, we're recognized in a number of different areas. And and seen in the Northwest, at least, as kind of a, a baseball outlet for, for media. So, But for the most part, it's just a blog. It's just a blog that does fun articles, uh, goofy, fun interviews, and does photos. And, you know, once again, I was told that, you know, this was more coverage than some Division One schools get, and that, that blew my mind. And as I've done stuff with uh, other community colleges in the area, done stuff with some other schools that are, uh, D2 and D3 and NAIA, I began to realize that other than parents taking photos and the occasional uh, student who's working for the school newspaper, there really isn't a lot of coverage. Most times I'm the only person out there photographing, uh, especially when you look at like summer league teams. If they don't have the money to hire a photographer to come in or are lucky enough to have an intern who is maybe a trying to be a photojournalist, they don't have photographers. They don't have anybody and they just have nothing to to have and share on social media. So first thing I learned right off the bat is that, hey guys, most teams don't have coverage. So if you're looking at doing sports photography, hey, a lot of teams, if you just ask them, they'll let you come in. So number two, and this one is one that I really was self-conscious about for a long time, I didn't have, and I still don't have, big expensive gear. Uh, my gear is actually pretty standard, uh, entry level type stuff in the world of photography. Um, you know, this is the camera that I that I use. It is a Nikon 3400. Uh, it's not a fancy one. It's actually just a newer model of what I had um, 10 years ago. I had the Nikon D40, uh, which looking back on it. Uh, still a lot better than I ever had as a kid, but nowadays it really pales in comparison. I actually have given it to my daughter, my uh, seven and a half year old daughter to use. And if she breaks it, she breaks it. Oh, well, uh, cause it's so outdated. And this one, like I said, it's just a newer model is all it is. And so, um, you know, it's, it's not horrible. It's not great. 
um, but it gets the job done. You don't need super fancy cameras. Now, the point and shoot ones are a little bit tougher because they don't necessarily uh, snap the photos fast enough. The DSLRs, I do recommend for sports photography uh, just because you can do different lenses, different lengths, uh, different apertures, that type of stuff. Uh, if you have questions about what all that stuff is, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer to the best of my ability or I'll show you guys uh, to some other people, some other videos that I've used over the years to really help me learn photography in a deeper way. But yeah, you don't need the big expensive gear. Like I said, I got this one, Nikon, I think brand new, $400, $500. Um, I got this one on sale when my last one got destroyed uh, in Arizona. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for it, to be honest with you. I think I paid $450 for it. Um, but lens-wise, this lens... I actually got with my Nikon D40 man I think it was about 10 years ago that I actually got it so it might even be longer than that so I've had this lens for a long time uh, it's not a super big lens it's just a 55 to 200 uh, so it's you know it does the job it works great I used it for for a decade and you now got a lot of photos that were fun photos got to share with people and we're great so and this one only cost online right now uh, you can go online and probably buy it for a hundred dollars maybe a hundred and fifty dollars and it still works still works great love it use it all the time now I have upgraded myself uh, lens wise because I wanted to be able to do more night shots which is one thing I do love about my new camera versus my older cameras I've used is it does better in low light situations so under the lights at a baseball stadium it works a lot better but it also helps that I have upgraded to this one. Uh, this is a much bigger lens than before. Uh, it's a 70 to 200, so the same distance. Uh, this is a 200, this is a 200. Uh, so in terms of like zooming in, they're the same. Uh, but this one lets in a lot more light, lets me do a lot more night shots. And even that one, you know, brand new, it's $2,400. I bought it used for $1,500. So it's a, it's a good chunk of money, but it's not the $10,000 that you see all the professional guys go out and get. And to be honest with you guys, I take better photos sometimes, a lot of the time, than professional photographers uh, when it comes to action shots. We have, you know, there's some photographers that I've seen who they're really good in the studio and they're really good for team shots and individual shots. But when you, they get out to the whole, to the game and are taking photos, they're not used to that and they don't necessarily know where to go, where to shoot, where to aim. And so I think that sometimes, a lot of the time, my photos, even though I'm not, you know, a big fancy $10,000 camera type of guy, are better just because I know how to shoot and where to shoot and that type of stuff. So you don't need the big expensive gear. It does help. I mean, it is nice. My, my bigger lens makes a big difference, but I still could survive. If something happened to that one, I still could use this one. In fact, in Arizona, when my camera blew up because I got hit by a ball, this one was actually damaged. So I actually had to jump to this one and use this for three and a half days down there. And really of the 50,000 or 45,000 photos I took or something like that, uh, most of them were on that shorter lens. So here's the, the third tip I have for you. And if you want to do sports photography, you need to love the sport or at least really enjoy it. Because if you don't, one, you're gonna not have fun out there. It's not gonna be very much fun. And the second part of that is, you're not gonna know necessarily where to shoot, which is the best angle, what, what people to focus on, when to focus on them. Those are all things that are important things you gotta learn. And if you know the game, know the sport, you'll know what to look for. Uh, you know, Baseball for me, I know I can get easy photos of the pitcher and I can get easy photos of the, of the hitter. They're always gonna be there. But I have to be able to guess and know where the ball could go or is going to get action shots of the infield and the outfield. I don't get a lot of outfield action shots just because they are a little bit farther away. Um, I could and kind of just blow them up because the, the megapixels on my camera are good enough where I could expand the view. But it just I don't get a lot out there. So, But you got to love the game. you got to enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy what you're covering. It, it, is, it is important. So fourth tip I have for you for sports photography, and that is take pictures of every player out there. Now, there is one exception. If you are covering a little league game and you're just there for fun, 
don't take pictures of all the kids. Uh, if you're there to cover a son, a daughter, niece, nephew, friends, kids, something like that, take photos of that kid. Maybe a few people on their team as well. Don't take photos of all the kids. You know, Little League, is, that's not where you go there for uh, unless a team hires you to, to go out and do that. But when you get into the older levels, college, and you know, if you cover a minor league game, even high school or summer wood bat leagues, take photos of every player. I can't tell you how many times I've taken photos of a game Put in them, put them up, and then have someone contact me and say, "Hey, did you get any of my son's photos? Did you get any any of him playing? I live on the other side of the country, can't go out there and see him play. Do you have anything?" And the good thing is, most of the time, I've had stuff of that player. Uh, there are sometimes, like the, it's a pitcher who through maybe the eighth or ninth inning, um, before I got my nice big long lens. Once it started getting dark, I was done. I had to go home. I really couldn't do anything else. So I missed a lot of the late inning pitchers. Um, even now, I still sometimes will leave a game early just because I go to so many games and some of the games drag on for three hours. And I just, I got to be home at some point and, and do stuff with my family. So uh, I do miss pit players once in a while. But most of the time, you know, I'm good to go. And then the fifth tip I have for you is share photos. Share them with people. That's what they enjoy, they love. Now I do sell photos, but I also make some available for people to download and have, because uh, it's about memories. It's about giving the gift of photography and photos to people to have for a lifetime. Um, I'm not against, once again, I'm not against selling photos. I do sell photos. That's really how I help pay to get to the games because you know, I spent almost $3,000, if not more, last year just getting to games, paying for the website that I have, all those things so it's costly so I do sell photos to try and uh, break even I haven't really made a profit yet in the past but I'm hoping this year to make a little bit of a profit but I still have photos up there for free uh, a lot of them have watermarks on them to just say not any know-it-all but they're not really blocking the, the picture like you still see the picture clear enough and fine it's not you know disorienting it or anything like that so share your photos it's one it's a great way of marketing yourself and getting uh, information out there for people to know who you are and what you're doing but also it's just a, a fun thing to do and and uh, you know give back so guys once again I'm Josh and I know it all and those are five things I've learned doing sports photography the last decade have a great day guys and I'll talk to you later